Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sarah and today I'm going to talk about how to get a higher GPA in college. So I'm going to show you guys five different ways that I managed to pass my classes and get a 3.7 GPA as a computer engineer. So one way I managed to pass my classes with either an A or a B is by using Google. I always had my laptop with me and whenever there was a homework problem that I didn't understand and I just didn't know what the answer was or even how to go about you know, answering it or even solving the problem to begin with, um, I would use Google and I would literally just control C the question and control V it in the Google toolbar search bar and see what popped up. I would look and filter through all the different websites that probably had similar uh, results with those problems or those questions that I was trying to answer. And most of the time, like 80% of the time, the answers were on the internet because the professors, they generally give you homework problems and assignments that are already like from a textbook or from another source, another you know worksheet that has been distributed through other universities and it's like a standard homework assignment for all students and there are other students out there who post their answers on the internet. And so this is what I would do in order to actually get those answers uh, for the homework and then just write them down. And in the meantime, I would actually, I wouldn't just like write down the answer and you know, submit it. I would go and I would understand or try to understand how it was solved. And if I could understand it, then I would probably um, be able to answer by myself, knowing the answer and knowing how they solved it. I would write it out in, my way, so to speak. I'm not completely writing down step by step how they solved it in the actual homework. I actually went through the steps and I solved it the way I understood it. And so that's how I was able to do the homework problems and submit them all. I've also heard professors say that you should get with like other people, get with your classmates, work together on that. Well, Google was my classmate, so to speak, because all of these homework assignments were already on the internet and I'm just like, why not just look it up, find the answer, write it down, a lot less stress and time spent on homework and more time studying for tests or focusing on different things that I actually wanna focus on because I honestly didn't really care too much for the homework. So that was one thing that really helped me in getting good grades in the homework assignments. So tip number two, and the second thing I would do is I would study on material that the professor went over. I would only focus on the things that they like lectured on. If the professor had reviews, I would go to those lectures or those classes so that I knew what they wanted us to focus on and what the problems would be you know, generalized on because it helped a lot and it like cut down a lot of time and effort studying for everything because I would not have time to study for everything. And I would only be able to study for, you know, a section that was taught in the book, you know, for the first half of the semester, I wouldn't have time to study for everything. So that's what I would do. I'd make sure that I knew what the professor wanted us to focus on. And I would just focus on that part. And I would just, just study like crazy. And that's, Tip number three, which is studying really hard. And when I studied hard, I would study hard like two to three days before the exam. And this is just how I was able to process the information and do well and actually perform better is by just cramming it all in. And I know that's not good. You shouldn't you know, cram everything in. But for me, I can't just remember the information that I was taught over the whole semester and just you know study every evening before the exam, um, I would forget what I would study for in the first week. So it just didn't work out. And that's, that's one thing that I think you should do is see what works best for you in terms of studying, how much to study, what to study on, everything like that. And then that way you'll do better in the exam and you'll be able to re retain the information. So that's what I did. I studied about two to three days all day, like probably eight hours, maybe 10 hours a day, um, just on the material the professor was talking about. And I would go through it in increments. And the way I would do that is I would start from the earliest chapter and work my way to the latest chapter. And I would go over information that I didn't understand when the professor had explained it to us or information or material that I didn't 
grasp in the homework problems and I would just like write down the answers. The homework problems where I would just write down the answers and I wouldn't try to understand or I didn't understand how the answer was solved or how the problem was solved. Um, I would go back and I'd focus on those ones. So I'd focus on the um, homeworks that I didn't understand and I would go and do that over again. And I would just keep working at it. And if I still didn't understand it, I just kept going. And I tried again and again and again until I could finally understand how the hell that person answered that question. And until then, I wouldn't stop. And in the meantime, that was very frustrating, but it helped me retain the information. And that's why I did that. If I didn't understand it and I just like, okay, cool, I know the answer. The, the exam comes along and I'm, I just totally fail. Like this is, these are engineering courses. So you have to understand how it's solved because they could ask you a completely different question. It's not memorization. You can't memorize the answers and you'll be fine. No, you can't do that. You have to, or memorize like events or times or names or anything like that. You can't memorize that because it, it won't help you in the exam. You have to understand the material and how to apply it. So that's what I did. And um, that took a long time, but it really helped me in the exams when it came time to take the exam, I knew what to do because I understood the problem and I understood how to solve the problem. So made exams very less stressful. Number four would be, I would read the textbooks that the professor was going over, but only on the parts that I didn't understand in the lectures. If a professor would go over a certain material um, during a lecture and I didn't understand it, I would go back either later that day or later that week and I would read the actual material from the book itself. So from the actual source, I wouldn't look at a video or anything like that. I'll go to the source, which is the book. And this was later on, probably junior, senior year of college because um, the classes got more and more complicated and more and more like focused on a certain subject and that it wasn't just generalized or like the answers weren't just on the internet that I could look and search up. So I had to actually go and read the textbook and that helped a lot. I should have done that freshman and like sophomore year, but yeah, I, I was stubborn. I didn't want to read anything. I just wanted to get those homework problems answered and just freaking submit it. Um, but yeah, junior, senior year, I started to actually read the books, the textbooks and everything that the professor said was in there. All you had to do was read it. I had tried to understand what they were saying and I tried to apply it to other problems, other practice problems in the book. Um, I didn't do that too often though, because I was generally able to understand what they were saying, um, but that helped a lot. But number five would be is to go to the professor whenever there's some sort of error in like homework or an exam or anything that you see that the professor kind of screwed up on and that you should be getting more points for. Um, because every little bit, every little point or anything like that counts towards your overall grade and it makes a huge difference at the end especially if it's an exam. If there's something up and there's like, it's a two, three point difference, go ask the professor and get that fixed because it's worth it. You'll get, I mean, you could be on the cusp at the end of the class, at the end of the semester, you could be um, like right on the verge of getting an A, you're like at an 89.8. Um, but if you had talked to the professor about that exam and gotten those two, three points, then you would be at a 90 and bam, there you go, A minus, and there goes your GPA, it goes up. Um, so yeah, those little things go a long way. Uh, that's how I was able to do it. I didn't have the classic, you know, classmates to go and talk to and get knowledge on and, you know, other people who have taken the course and get their homework assignments. Um, generally, I think that's what all the other students did. The engineering students, they all had like a little clique that they went to and they were able to bounce off um, homework assignments and you know, quizzes and all that stuff off of each other and get the answers that way. Um, I just wanted to show you guys a different way. You can always use the internet and, you know, this is how I was able to do it without having any classmates or anyone to actually rely on to get a, um, you know, to pass the class and to get an A or a B or to get a 3.7 GPA. You can do it on your own. It's going to be tough and tedious, but you can do it. And as long as you just stick to it and are determined, to get that damn degree, <laughs> you'll be okay. Yeah, those are like the five things that I've done to help me get like a 3.7 GPA and to pass as a computer engineer without having to rely on others um, other than the internet. I mean, I guess that is relying on other people. I hope you like this video 
and I hope you found it useful. And if you did, please let me know in the comment section below. Please like and subscribe. Uh, please let me know what other videos that you would want to see in the future and I'll definitely put the effort into making them because I want to be able to provide you guys with information and that show you that it is possible, especially it's possible uh, majoring in computer engineering by yourself pretty much. Um, yeah. So I hope you like this video and please like and subscribe below. Thanks for watching. Bye.